Good evening. I'd like to call the August 23rd, 2016 Pocosin City School Board meeting to order. Uh, would you rise for the pledge to the... Do we have any additions or modifications to the agenda? We have none this evening. Thank you. Well, let's move on to recognitions. All right, this evening um, is a bittersweet evening because we're actually taking some time to recognize two of our outgoing school board members who have moved off the board. So first, I'd like to ask Mr. Alan Melton to come forward. On behalf of the school division, I want to thank Al Melton for all that he has done for our students, staff, and community for the past six years. Al has worked hard during his tenure to support the schools, and especially in light of the budget challenges we faced. He also served in leadership roles by serving as vice chair this past year, as well as the board representative to the WHRO board. Al attended school division events regularly, even though his own children had graduated. He could be found at football games and back to school events, as well as convocation and graduation ceremonies and at our recognition dinners. Al also served on the state CTE board through his own work, so he was able to support our school division in a different way. Al, you've made a difference for many and we will miss having you as part of the school board. We know you will be busy with your new grandchild, but we hope to still see you at an occasional Procosin School Division event. Please join me in thanking Al for his years of service to the school board. Carter, if you'd please come forward. I would also like to thank Dr. Gary, Gary Carter for his service on the board for the past seven years. He served as the board representative to the Special Education Advisory Committee at different points during his tenure on the board. Additionally, Gary served as the chair of the board for almost three years after having to step into the position after the sudden passing of our previous chair, Bill Smith. As board chair, Gary led the board through the development of three budgets during very challenging times. He also worked hard to ensure the board's relationship with city council was a positive one. Gary also attended school division events when possible as he watched two of his three children graduate from our schools while serving on the board. On a personal note, as board chair, Gary was always willing to take my phone calls when I needed to inform him of events and concerns. His support for our school division and for me personally has been very much appreciated. Gary, we are so very sorry to see you, see you leave the board, but know that you have also made a positive difference for our students, our staff, and our community. I know I speak for everyone when I say thank you and that we wish you all the best and you will be missed. We're going to take a moment to take a snapshot of our two outgoing board members with our board chair. Thank you both so much. Now we're going to move on to presentations and reports. Um, Ms. Woodruff, could you come forward, please, and give us the financial update? Good evening, Chairman Cast, members of the school board, and Dr. Parrish. For the finance report this evening, I wanted to bring your attention to 
um, consent agenda item 6C, which is the revised authorization to accept and expend additional revenues. At the July meeting, we discussed making a change to this authorization to show us a subtotal if there are multiple expenditure line items. So what we did was we have a column for revenue and a column for expenditures. So if there are multiple line items, you can see that revenue equals expenditures. Um, so you can see this on the one example for the new project-based learning grant. We are asking you to authorize the year, first year of the grant. Um, so you can see the revenue total is $110,212.50. And then there are five expenditure line items for this spending, which also totals $110,212.50. So um, hopefully that helps better explain how they equal. Um, benefits enrollment is open for new teachers. We met with them um, the last two days and got them going on that. Um, our auditors will be in the office next week starting field work, and then they'll be back in September as well. Um, and I'm also working on the state required annual school report for fiscal year 2016, which is due in September. So that concludes my report. Do you have any questions? Thank you very much. Are there any questions from the board? Thank you. I was going to say, are there any comments from the board? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Pappas, could you come forward and give us the operations update, please? Good evening, Chairman Cass, School Board, Dr. Parrish. In the area of transportation, PCPS transportation staff recently sent home letters to K-5 to the parent households of K-5 students soliciting information relative to alternate pickup and drop-off locations. These are most often times daycare. So these are addresses other than one's residence, which is really the basis by which the routes initially are constructed. This gives families an opportunity to communicate this most important pickup and take-home information to us prior to the start of school. Tomorrow, we will be conducting the first of our two required transportation in-service sessions. These um, deal with a lot of housekeeping, but focus primarily on safety. In the area of custodial services, we're just about to put the finishing touches on our summer deep cleaning. Uh, needless to say, all areas of the building have been touched and will be ready for faculty and staff and students when they return. In the area of maintenance, PCPS maintenance staff's been busy getting the buildings up to SNEF for the 2016-17 school year. Among the many projects at PMS this year, we painted the cafeteria, various classrooms, hallways, bathrooms, and gym walls. Painting the parking lots will be done um, starting tomorrow pl in plenty of time for school so that it'll be easier when big events occur to include parking uh, accessibility for Parks and Rec. At PHS, work has been done to retrofit and modify an existing bathroom for the more effective use by mobility impaired students. A sidewalk was created that allows students to walk from the circle, if you're familiar with the circle, and or the pool parking lot um, so that they no longer have to walk into the path of oncoming cars. We added a sidewalk from the back of the gym hallway to the track making the track more accessible to everyone. We added a handicap ramp from the circle at PHS to the ball field. And a concrete pad was added for the ticket booth servicing the softball field. At PES, work was done to create a usable field for students and the community behind the school. This field was power raked by Mr. Manfred Freeman, who donated his time his equipment, his considerable know-how to create this acre of ground at the rear of the school that now sports approximately one acre of Bermuda grass. At PPS, work was done to repair some leaking roof areas and painting continued in areas of the library. In the area of safety and security, PCPS submitted the necessary documentation to receive a fourth round of security grant funding. While the documents have been sent and acknowledged as received, we have not been notified if we will once again qualify for security grant funds. All returning PCPS staff will receive online training on important human resource topics 
as well as required training in the area of bloodborne pathogens. All new staff members will receive both personal and online training. And that concludes my operations report. Thank you, Mr. Pappas. Any questions, comments? Do we have identified alternate pickup and drop off points for students should the tide come up during a school day? Yes, we, um, we do have that. We've had that for years. Um, and everybody pretty much knows that our policy is, is that when the tide rises, we can only go as far as the stop prior to roads being covered. We also have a system whereby when we know the tides are riding, we use our uh, automated call system and we've identified actual roads and families on roads and we call them ahead of time with the help of the schools sometimes, but we, we do have a process. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. You were talking about the forms for this, the bus schedules for the pickup and the drop off. Yes. Hypothetically speaking, what if a parent or school board member has lost their form? Um, well, you of course would get no special privileges. You would have to go through the system. <laughs> but if you would be so kind as to call us, um, Shirley Martin in the school board, or talk to the school office staff, we'll take that information and we will be glad to add it, whether it's for you or anybody. Uh, for anybody, that's great information, thank you. Yes. Actually, what we could look to do too is get it loaded on our website under transportation so then people could access it even more easily. Oh, that's great. We will do that too. The form will be there. Great idea, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pappas. Appreciate the input. Okay, Ms. Fox, could you come forward for the instructional update, please? Good evening, Chairman Cast, Vice Chair Hux, members of the board, and Dr. Parrish. This evening I'll be sharing with you some of our SOL data um, and other instructional information that's relevant at this time. Um, the SOL information that I will be sharing was recently published in the paper. So before we go into the actual data, I just wanted to share a few things with you about what happened this past year with regard to testing. Um, so just so that you're familiar with it, we did have computer adaptive testing, or you'll hear it referred to very often as CAT testing, in mathematics for students in grades three and um, seven and eight used this format in the spring of 2016 for the first time. Um, grade six used it prior to this past year, so it was the second year for them. Um, Performance-based assessments are now being given in the area of social studies to students in grades 3, 5, 6, and 7, so they no longer take a multiple choice assessment. Our students will continue to be exposed to more rigorous technology-enhanced items um, on the SOL tests. So this slide just shows you the overall pass rate. Oh, sorry. Okay, sorry. This slide shows you the overall pass rates um, for us as a division and recognize that these are the combined scores um, for each of the content areas across K-12. Um, and what you'll see here is that we did exceed the state pass rates in all areas, um, again. And students scored at or above the state averages in all but one of the 28 different tested areas. Um, and what we're going to do is show you just some breakouts of some different pass advance scores that we think are relevant for you to have information about. So at Pocosin Elementary School, the pass rate, pass advanced rate for students in grade four mathematics was a 33% this past year, and that was an increase um, from the previous year of 12 percentage points. Um, for our fourth grade Virginia Studies test, the advanced pass rate level there was a 54%. And as a high performing school division, it can sometimes be challenging to move the overall pass rate for a content area by more than one or two percentage points. However, part of our strategic plan is focused on looking at pass advance rates and how we can help students move from just meeting the standard to exceeding the standard. Um, and so these next three slides, we'll just, we'll look at those for each of the schools. So this is Pocosin Elementary School. And just as a reminder, um, the accreditation for Pocosin Primary is tied into the elementary school.
for Pocosin Middle School, the past advance rate for grade eight reading is 19% this year, and that's an increase of eight percentage points. And 29% of our students pass the grade six reading test at the advanced level. For Pocosin High School, the pass advance rate for World History II is 40%, and that's an increase of 17 percentage points from last year. And 26% of our students pass the Algebra II test at the advanced level. And just this is just a quick review of what it means, because there have been a lot of changes with accountability over the past year with the passing of the new Every Student Succeeds Act. So based on this data, we anticipate that as a division, we'll be fully accredited with the Virginia Board of Education. And what that means in order to be fully accredited, we have to score at least a 75% or higher in our pass rates for English, and at least a 70% or higher in science, math, and social studies. And high schools, they have an additional index where we have to ensure that our graduation rate is at least 85% or higher in order for them to receive accreditation. Um, this school year has been designated by the state as a transition year to review the new ESSA um, Act and its federal accountability determinations. Um, so you'll see a lot of that in the press and, and talk about that coming up in September and October. And finally, the school report card that's published by the Virginia Department of Education is currently being revamped, and it's slated to be released um, in early fall. So once that information comes out, we will share that with you. And looking ahead for this year, um, we do have the new history and social sciences SOLs have been developed by the state, and the first assessment using those standards will be in 2018. So we're using developing the crosswalks to work, walk our teachers through the process of updating their curriculum. The Virginia Department of Education is also currently on schedule to adopt the new math standards in September of this year with the first test with those standards being given in 2019. So again, we'll move our teachers through that process over the next couple of years. And VDOE also continues to look at the accountability system um, and how we assess students. So we will continue to keep you updated on those changes as we get them. And as I mentioned, with the state looking at the changes in the accountability system, our students can be assessed in different ways other than just multiple choice assessments. And so we're very, very excited to announce that uh, Pocosin Public Schools has been awarded a new grant that focuses on project-based learning which allows students to demonstrate learning in a variety of ways. Um, this grant also supports our strategic plan goal of having all students think critically. So over the next five years, we're gonna be working to integrate project-based learning at the middle school and the high school. And finally, just some back to school information that might be helpful reminders for everyone. Um, we had a very successful new teacher orientation um, yesterday and today, a wonderful breakfast this morning put on by the Kiwanis. All of our teachers are returning tomorrow, so they'll have their first uh, meetings with their principals and get everything rolling for the new school year. Our division-wide convocation is this Friday at Pocosin High School, and we start at 1045. And then we've just listed for you our open house dates for each of the schools. Um, and there is more detailed information on each of the web pages in terms of what grade levels are at each of those times. And just a final reminder that the first day of school is Tuesday, September the 6th, and we look forward to welcoming all of our students back. So we wish our teachers and staff, students and parents best wishes for the school year. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any questions or comments? I have a question. With the, the the new report card, have they asked for input from the local school divisions? They have. Um, they've presented some ideas of things that might be considered um, on this. They're looking more at qualities of schools rather than just a data, 100% data-driven report. So some input has been gained from the schools. And if I can interrupt, I actually attended a public hearing that was held in Williamsburg um, that had several members of the state board in attendance as well as the state superintendent. And part of that public hearing was intended to give some input on the school report card as well as the potential changes in the accountability um, 
pieces that may change as the state board continues its work. And I'll actually talk a little bit about some of this at convocation on Friday. Same question about the testing. Have they asked for input the new, sorry, test? Yes, they have. And the other group that's working on that, which fortunately I have um, been selected to serve on this year, is the SOL Innovation Committee. So that group is, um, did part of that work that actually ended up reducing the elementary school and middle school, the number of SOL tests, and allowing us to do uh, performance assessments for certain um, grade levels, certain content areas. So what we're now tackling as a committee, and we'll be providing recommendations to both um, the Board of Education as well as the Governor and General Assembly, are what we're going to do at the high school level. So I will say that um, they are giving us um, many opportunities to provide input, whether through specific committee work. Um, and that committee that I'm on um, has both um, delegates and senators from both sides of the aisle, as well as educators and uh, business folks from across the state. So I do think they're doing a good job of getting input at this point. Thank you, Dr. Parrish. Ms. Brown, is, is there any public comment tonight? Thank you very much. Mr. Hux, can you lead us through the consent agenda, please? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. On the consent agenda, we have three items tonight. Item A, approval of financial reports, which is enclosed. Item B, approval of personnel action, which is enclosed. And item C, authorization to change appropriation and to accept and expend funds in accordance with the attached request which is enclosed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do we have a motion for approval of the consent agenda? Second? Second. Ms. Primers, can we have a vote, please? Ms. Whitaker? Aye. Ms. Rollins? Aye. Mr. Holcomb? Aye. Ms. Mosteller? Aye. 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 Mr. Hux? Aye. Aye. Okay, moving on. Consideration of approval of minutes of the June regular meeting and work session. Do we have a motion for approval? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. I assume there's no discussion. Any, any input? Can we have a vote, please? Ms. Whitaker? Aye. Ms. Rollins? Aye. Ms. Verhoeven? Aye. Ms. Mosteller? Abstain. Abstain. Aye. Chairman Gass. Aye. Five, two, abstentions. Item B, consideration of approval of minutes of July special organizational meeting. Do we have a motion for approval? Second. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you very much. Any questions or comments? Ms. Rymers. Aye. Ms. Rollins. Aye. Mr. Holcomb. Aye. Ms. Mosteller. Aye. Ms. Hessel. Abstain. Mr. Hawks. Aye. Chairman. Aye. Aye. Item C, consideration of approval of second reading of changes to policy manual. Dr. Parrish. Yes, we brought these to you in first reading at your June meeting, and we were able to also provide all that information to Ms. Mosteller and Ms. Hussle, so they've had those changes as well for a while. We're bringing them to you as, um, in second reading, and just a reminder to our community, these are changes um, that are connected to laws that were made by the General Assembly in the spring, and so what we need to do is update our policy so that we align ourselves with the new state code. Um, we do sometimes also have ones to align our practice with our policy as well. So these have been obviously vetted by our attorney as well. So we bring this to you as a recommendation for approval of the changes to the policy manual. Thank you very much. Do we have a motion for approval? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. Any questions or comments? Ms. Rymers? Ms. Whitaker? Aye. Ms. Rollins? Aye. Mr. Holcomb? Aye. Ms. Mosteller? Aye. Ms. Hessel? Aye. Mr. Hux? Aye. Chairman Katz? Aye. Motion passes 7-0. Okay, item D, consideration approval of first reading of changes to policy 5-7.4, travel expenses to second reading. 
Did I say that correctly? You did. That's We're actually bringing this one to you for the first time, and we didn't get these in the policy changes in June. What we realized was the, the IRS has changed its travel rates, and you as a board, um, we had talked about this, I think, about a year or so ago, saying that we would stick with the IRS rates. But um, what we came to realize is let's just put that in policy so that every time the IRS changes its travel rates, we're not coming to you with a new travel rate. So what this reading does, um, what this policy change does is changes it so that we automatically will change our travel rate, what we pay for mileage, when the IRS updates theirs. Um, so we're bringing this to you in first reading, and what we'll see then is you'll see it again in September for second reading, asking you to approve it at that time. Thank you very much. Do we have a motion for approval? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you. Comment or discussion? I saw your light come on, I thought. <laughs> Ms. Reimers. Ms. Winter? Aye. Ms. <laughs> Aye. Ms. Aye. 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 And I so wanted to make a comment about your light being on. <laughs> Item E, consideration of approval of appointment of deputy clerk. Do we have a motion for approval? A move. A second? Second. Any comment or discussion about this item? Ms. Reimers? Aye. Ms. Rollins? Aye. Ms. Holcomb? Aye. Ms. Mosteller? Aye. Ms. Hessel? Aye. 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 Item F, consideration of approval of authorized signature in absence of division superintendent. Do we have a motion for approval? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. second. We have a tie. <laughs> Any questions or comments? Ms. Reimers? Ms. Whitaker? Aye. Ms. Rollins? Aye. Mr. Holcomb? Aye. Ms. Mosteller? Aye. Ms. Hessel? Aye. 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 Item G, consideration approval of personnel action. Do we have a motion for approval? So, so moved. moved. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, do we have any comments or discussion? I just want to say that I'm going to be abstaining this for personal reasons. Thank you. Any other comment, discussion? Ms. Reimers? Aye. Ms. Aye. Mr. Holcomb? Aye. Ms. Mosteller? Aye. Abstain. Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Dr. Parrish, can you lead us off for our communication, please? Yes, and I just want to welcome everyone back. We know we'll see all of our veteran teachers um, starting tomorrow. I have to say um, we started our new teacher orientation yesterday, and then we met, as um, I think Dr. Fox mentioned, at a Kiwanis breakfast this morning, and I was very happy to see that every single one of them returned this morning, so they did elect to stay with us, always a relief. Um, but they were very excited, and I want to thank the Kiwanis. They provided all of our new teachers with $50 gift certificates to help them buy, purchase things to set up their classroom, which is wonderful. So we thank them for their support. Um, I also want to welcome our two new board members up here, um, Mrs. Mosteller and Ms. Hulser. We are it's Hulsel. We're excited to have you with us. Um, and looking forward um, to working with you in the coming years. Uh, as Dr. Fox said, she, we did um, put, she had up there the orientation date, so we do encourage parents to please come to those so you can help orient your students to the building. A reminder, that's not the time that you'll spend a lot of time with your teachers. That will occur at back to school night, and you'll get those dates as well, but they are also available on the websites now. And also, um, as Dr. Fox said, school starts on September 6th. So all of those out you in the com out in the community, remember that school buses do sometimes slow down your commute. So you may want to plan accordingly for our buses all hitting the road for the first time on September 6th. So thank you. Thank you, Dr. Parrish. Ms. Whitaker. 
Uh, yes, thank you. Um, I'd just like to um, say thank you and goodbye to Mr. Melton and Dr. Carter. They have been wonderful members of this school board and have provided a lot of uh, guidance and leadership to this, uh, to this group, I believe. And, um, but I'd, I'm also very happy to welcome Jennifer and, and Christy here. It's great to have you on board. And I think for the first time since I've been on the board, which this is now my fifth year, the women outnumber the men. <laughs> That's all okay, I've got. <laughs> Thank you. Ms. Rollins? Mr. Holcomb, everything Gail said except the ratio thing. Yeah. <laughs> Ms. Mosteller? I would also like to thank uh, Mr. Melton and Dr. Carter for their service and just also to say that I look forward to serving the board. Thank you. Ms. Helsel? I'm going to echo Jennifer's statement and I look forward to serving with you all. <coughs> Vice Chairman Hux. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to thank the PTOs from all of our schools and all of the administrative staff for providing the welcome event for our new families and uh, new folks to the school system. I think that's a good reflection of what we're all about in the community and the school system. So thanks again for your thoughtfulness and your efforts. Thank you very much. I, I would also like to, to thank Mr. Melton and Dr. Carter. Um, uh, both of them were on board when I came on board and were so welcoming and helped me adjust to the board and to hopefully to do a good job. And it's directly proportional to the time they spent with me. So thank you very much. And I'd like to welcome Jennifer and Christy. And Dr. Parrish, I'd like to ask City Council to give us board members with easier last names to pronounce. <laughs> Um, I'd like to welcome all new teachers, and uh, I'd also like to thank my friend and a friend of Pocos and Manfred Freeman for the work that he's done for the schools. Manfred is amazing, and I'd like to thank the Kiwanis Club, and I look forward to convocation on Friday. Do we have any material for board review? We do not. Okay, I believe we're going to stand adjourned. <laughs>